Las Vegas. This taken in right around the goal line. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. They'll be led out by a seventh-year pro and a literal rocket scientist. Here's Joshua Dobbs. We're seeing it more and more in this league, how teams love to have athletes back there taking the snaps, guys who can throw it and move around and get yards with their legs if needed. He's one of the best examples that we see out there right now. He can throw for hundreds of yards one week and then run for 100 plus the next. He adds an extra dimension that really confounds defenses when he puts it all together. Dobbs, and the throw here caught by Addison. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 19 yards right off the bat and a quick first down. That's a good start to the ball game. Maybe a little bit of a tone setter offensively. They come out throwing right away, and it's an early completion and a quick first down. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Now Dobbs. This goes out wide for Madison. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. I like it. I like it. I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game, and you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it. It really gets them amped up as they go forward. On play action, it's Dobbs. This is caught by Addison. Now he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. First carry for the Boise State Bronco, Alexander Madison. And he'll get this just inside the 30-yard line. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Second and seven. Another carry now for Madison. And he'll be brought down at about the 25 after a pickup of four. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Dobbs is throwing. And the throw there going to be incomplete. How about this defense? They came up with a couple of big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. Dobbs. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. Wow, first and goal, and defensively, all they can do is shake their heads. Not only did they allow the conversion, but a big play as well. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical, they've been crisp, and as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Madison will take this into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. 
Well, he finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three down, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. So that drive in total eight plays. And it was capped off by a touchdown scamper from Alexander Madison. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. DeAndre Carter now from his end zone. And he returns this to the 22. So here comes the Raiders offense now onto the field. Bringing them out is the pocket passer from Purdue, rookie Aiden O'Connell. For every rookie prospect, there are always nerves involved in this moment, running your team out to start a game. But there's a reason they brought him in. We're willing to make him their starter today. They believe he can overcome those nerves and lead his team to a victory. We saw him do it at the collegiate level and really make himself into a leader and someone you can envision doing the exact same thing here in the NFL. O'Connell looking to throw on first. That's going to be caught. It's Jacoby Myers. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. They'll stay on the ground with Jacobs. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher, third and six. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package, and that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Here's third and six. Here's O'Connell looking to throw it. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have the Raiders first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know. They want to get this man involved as well, and that's what they just did on that play. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Running straight ahead is Jacobs, and he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Second down and six now. To throw here, O'Connell. That's to the rookie from Notre Dame, Michael Mayer. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Well, that was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. Oh. 
O'Connell to throw, third and short. That is caught, and he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter from Vegas, the home standing Raiders with a football here as they've got it with a first and ten. Back to the running game with Jacobs. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. And they go play action here with O'Connell. That ball nearly intercepted. The rookie had his hands on it, but couldn't pull it in. And that is first incompletion after a four for four start. Yeah, but they should back off from what they're doing. I like the play calling right out of the gate. I like the tone that they're setting. Keep going in that direction. They're two for two on third down conversions on this drive. This one tough. They need nine yards on third down. He finds his man complete. That's Jacobs. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. And he's had great protection back there to throw, really been able to survey from the pocket. That means the jersey stays clean, so the dry cleaning bill, that's reduced. It also means the trainer doesn't have to deal with him because he's not getting hit. Also means that he's able to find targets downfield at his leisure. That allows him to be really accurate. Daniel Carlson on for the field goal. Remember, he was drafted and released by the Vikings. The kick by Carlson is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So both teams come away with points on their opening drives, and they still trail. They answered the touchdown with a field goal, but at least able to break that goose egg here early. And that is what's important, right? Because they didn't let that initial touchdown go unanswered. Took the ball themselves, moved it downfield, and put it through the post for three points. Game on. After the made field goal, Carlson now sets up to kick this away. Taken at the goal line. And able to get this out to the 25. The Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Dobbs looking to throw on first down. Over the middle and complete to Addison. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Off the play fake. Here's Dobbs. That's caught by the big tight end, T.J. Hawkinson. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. It's his first catch, and it'll be good for 15 at a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. 
On first and 10, Dobbs. They're going back to the same well. It's Hawkinson again. Short completion, just four yards, and it's second down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. From just shy of midfield, here's second and six. They'll go Madison up the middle. And this will be taken across midfield and into Raider territory. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Running from the shotgun with Madison. And he'll pick up about three there up to the 43. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else they'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. What do they have for this? Third and 11. Throwing here, Dobbs. Addison hauls it in. And they'll get this across the midfield stripe, but still winding up short of the first down. That'll go for a gain of seven. And that's going to make it fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. So on fourth down, Ryan Wright on to punt for Minnesota. DeAndre Carter back deep. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Second drive of the game coming up for this Las Vegas offense. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. On the ground, it's Jacobs to start the drive. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. They'll get six on the play, and it's going to take us to the two-minute warning. From the 34, here's second and four. Here's O'Connell. Quickly a slant to Renfro. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. The quick slant, good for a first down, a gain of 12. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Throwing, O'Connell. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. The lessons will continue, but this rookie, he's got to learn how to read situations just a little bit better. That far behind the line, he's got to find a way to get rid of the football and not take the sack, whether it's with his legs or just throwing it away. He'll get this underneath to Jacobs. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. They need 18 yards here on third down. Jacob's going to try the middle. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. 
The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So on fourth down, here's A.J. Cole to punt for the Raiders. Brandon Powell deep for Minnesota. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. The Vikings going to take over now late in this first half. And with a 7-3 lead, we'll see how aggressive they want to be. First down, Dobbs to throw. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. He came through well with a nice pass breakup there. Fortunate that he was on the spot. He's the only guy left to prevent the first down. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and 10. Out of the gun, Dobbs. And that's complete to K.J. Osborne. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. So it was already a gain on the completion, but tack on some more with that penalty. Absolutely, and no matter what angle you're making a tackle from, you can't grab the face mask, and that's just putting your defense on its heels just a little bit more. Now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Now Dobbs. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Here now, second and four. Here's Dobbs to throw. And that one going to come up short. Low throw. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. To throw is Dobbs. And that is incomplete. Boy, oh, did everything but hold on to it. But a nice play defensively, and now it brings up fourth down. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get to third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. The Raider offense heading back for one final first half drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. A little over 20 seconds remaining in the half as they'll line up here first and 10. Back to throw, O'Connell. Throw left side, taken in by Renfro. Now the Raiders going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one.
Got it here at the 29 on second and eight. Now it's O'Connell. That's complete into the hands of Myers. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now a signal and a timeout call as it comes with nine seconds to go in this first half of play. First and ten, it's O'Connell. Throw out wide is incomplete. No such risk in anything there on first down. Even though he's still in the pocket, he had a receiver out to his side, so just put that in a spot where the only people who could make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. Final shot before break. O'Connell. Try to drop one in, but it's incomplete. Due to time constraints, we move you forward in today's broadcast to the beginning of the third quarter. are going to have it first and they trail here as we get back to it in this third quarter of action from his end zone here comes Carter and he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22 now comes the Raiders offense they'll go on offense first to start quarter number three Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. and They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup if someone's trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. And this is going to be a Raiders first down as the tackle made at about the 38. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. And O'Connell now to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Jacobs. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. I think the best offenses love to get the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss. And they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. O'Connell to throw on second down. And that's complete to Adams. And Devontae's going to have a Raiders first down as he's across midfield to the 48. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. Here's Jacobs on first and 10. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. 
Two yards, the loss, second and 12. I know they'd love to take some heat off of that young quarterback, but so far, not much in the running game, and this won't help things either. A loss on that play. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And this one nearly intercepted. Boy, that would have been a great time for their first pick. But instead, it's third down. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Now O'Connell. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 34-yard line. A sizable 16-yard chunk there. The drive continues. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They look like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. <laughs> On the handoff, this is Jacobs. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before, they always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Off the play fake, here's O'Connell. They swing that out wide to Jacobs. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. They'll fake the jet sweep there. Instead, hand to Jacobs up the middle. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. It's interesting going into this game, there was so much talk from both sides about who would control the line of scrimmage. I think we've seen who has it in this one so far. Well, they bottled him up. He's barely averaging over three yards a carry right now. Once again, it's Jacobs. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. So that time they get the tight end on the hold. Normally he's a pretty good run blocker, but this time he just didn't get his arms extended and let go quickly enough. The flag came out as a result. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Out of the shotgun, here's O'Connell. Over the middle complete, it's Jacobs. Only able to gain a couple there. And they're gonna face an uphill battle here on third and long. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A field goal helps, but a touchdown gets you the lead. That had to be the message transmitted in the huddle. And they delivered there as that throw is going to keep the drive alive. And even better than that, set them up with a first and goal.
Looking to throw. O'Connell. Open man. It's Mayer in the end zone for the Raiders touchdown. It's a six-yard touchdown pass. And the Raiders have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. Now for the extra point, Daniel Carlson. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And it was finished off by a Michael Mayer touchdown grab. Touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. And yeah, they'll be working from behind now following the touchdown a moment ago on the opening drive of the half. I think the guys right now, but as they go out on offense, they're zeroing in on one big key. They don't have to do anything differently just because they're down on the scoreboard now. The intent still the same in what they plan to do on offense. Back now in Las Vegas. Welcome back, everybody. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Back to throw Dobbs. Throw 25 before he's out of bounds. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. The offense on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and nine. Now Dobbs. I had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Oh, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. And here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Raiders will take over now, first and 10. Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Throwing on first down, O'Connell. He finds his man complete. That's Jacobs. So the completion good for six yards, and that will bring up second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. On second down, Jacobs takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. Third and three. 
Play action. Now Connell. Looking deep for Adams. A leap and he's got it. He got it. It's a big play there for Vegas. And even 50 yards. Defender was right there in his shorts. Is that one of those situations as a DB where you just tip your cap and say, nice catch? Well, you're supposed to, but a true competitor, he's not tipping his cap at all. He's upset he still didn't make the play. If it's a 50-50 ball or a moment of truth, He's got to win more than his fair share of them as well. Probably especially angry because if it was incomplete, it would have been fourth down. Exactly. The throw over the middle taken in. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. O'Connell working from the gun. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And the Raiders are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Jacobs is not going to get in. In fact, he'll lose a couple of yards back to the three. This is where coaches have to have spent a lot of time going over situations with their players because him getting tackled there is not the worst thing in the world. You're going to run more plays, right? Clock's going to go. But his thought process is getting into the end zone. It's counterintuitive for him to actually go down in this spot. Yeah, but you, like you say, you don't want to get in the end zone too early here. No, not at all, because you may leave an opening that could come back and get you. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's Raider football as we get you reset. They've got it second and goal now as they look for that final dagger. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. One more time with Jacobs. And he is in. Touchdown, Raiders. Josh Jacobs. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Raiders are able to build on to their fourth quarter lead. And they would not be denied on the ground, powering it in just one play after they got stopped short. And how about how many tight ends were on the field? Because in today's NFL, we think of the tight end more as a pass catcher. But this group, they tell them you've got to be able to run block to stay on this team. And they committed to it and got it done right there. Touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. So all eyes on this Vikings offense. Down by 10, a minute 54 on the clock. It's been a struggle to score all day, and now they need to do it twice here late to have a chance. Dobbs. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 
Well, they've certainly had their share of troubles running the football in this one, but this play is almost an extension of the running game right here. They set up the screen, let him work out in space on the perimeter, and he turns it into a big pickup. All three timeouts remain, but they've got to score quick. It's first and ten. Now Dobbs. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Osborne. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Now second and four. Dobbs is throwing. This one caught by Osborne, right side. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders' 24-yard line. Of course, remember, you need a touchdown here and a field goal. Doesn't matter the order, but they have to get it done and get it done fast. Here's first down. Dobbs. They'll get this underneath to Madison. And that's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. The Vikings in the hurry up. They're hustling up to the line. Here's Dobbs to throw. This is caught. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. go. Now first and goal. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And it's caught. He's got it for a late touchdown. But probably a little too late. It would take a miracle of epic proportions if they're going to pull this one off. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. you got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side. Get that high hop and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. Joseph connects on the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So the clock sits at 16 seconds as they line up for the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. Uh, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as he'll stop it with 13 seconds left to play. The Raiders likely going to get out of this with a victory as they take a knee. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout 
And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. Well, you really can't ask for much more than what we just had here. Not only a close game that went down.